The Marathon Petroleum Refinery in Detroit, petrochemical facilities in Louisiana's Cancer Alley, Philadelphia's recently shuttered refinery and now toxic wasteland, Chicago's petroleum coke piles. What do they all have in common? For one, they all spew toxic pollutants, and they all were or are in predominantly black communities. Here's Peggy Shepard, executive director of New York City-based group We Act for Environmental Justice. Today, black communities are still not created equal. They are impacted by disproportionate and cumulative exposure to multiple contaminants in our air, water, and soil. Those contaminants can have serious health impacts. African Americans have the highest death rate, lowest survival rate for cancer in the country. And Black Americans are two to three times more likely to die from a range of disease like hypertension, diabetes, kidney, kidney failure, and asthma. Shepard was speaking at a June 15th press briefing on the relaunch of the National Black Environmental Justice Network. The announcement came about two weeks after the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The organization was active from 1999 to 2006, but went on hiatus when its executive director passed away from cancer. The Real News attended the press briefing and spoke to two executive committee members to learn more about the consortium's activism. One of them, Beverly Wright, told The Real News that the group had already planned the relaunch for months prior to the killing of Floyd. It just was time for Black people to have their own organization so that we could have our own voice, a strong voice, in the middle of, in the midst of what was, of the harm that was being done to us and sort of um, carve out ways for uh, people who have certain expertise to deal with certain problems because their problems were so numerous. The group's relaunch coincides too with the COVID-19 pandemic and its disproportionate impact on communities of color. Recent Harvard and Stanford studies concluded that poor air quality can make communities more susceptible to contracting the virus. And a July 5th New York Times analysis concluded that predominantly black communities are about two and a half times more likely to contract the virus than white communities. Here's right at the press briefing. COVID-19 for many Black workers and families feels like the final nail in the coffin, especially in the capacity of essential and frontline workers. Black essential workers are triply impacted, facing economic inequality, devastating unemployment, and elevated health threats. We asked executive committee member Donnell Wilkins, president of the Detroit-based Green Door Initiative, about the necessity of a network-based front against these competing threats. There is often this danger of being isolated and being um, uh, in your local communities, you may be seen as an outlier, uh, that um, this is not a big deal. On the contrary, Wilkins says the same environmental justice issues arise in one Black community after another. It seems a little, you know, unusual that these kind of conditions exist every place where we're concentrated. Um, just like you can go to any city, and if you end up on Martin Luther King Drive or Avenue or, or Street, you know that's where Black people live. In Detroit, companies like Marathon Petroleum pose serious health risks for frontline communities, including increased rates of cancer, kidney failure, asthma, and nausea. 87% of the people in the 48217 zip code, the most toxic one in Michigan, which houses Marathon's refinery and other industrial facilities, are black. It was no accident that most of the folks that live there happen to be black folks. The pattern repeats itself in Louisiana along the Mississippi River, Wright explained, with petrochemical refineries dotting the landscape in what many call Cancer Alley. You're looking at uh, communities, mostly African-American communities that are fence line to these facilities. And our state has the highest cancer rate in the nation and the African-American cancer rate is 30% higher than the white cancer rate. Wright added that historically, other minority populations have also faced the brunt of environmental injustice from industrial projects. You know, in Oklahoma, places like that, probably Native Americans in California, it was uh, Latinos. So you can just 
follow the pattern of what's the largest and most despised minority group in the area, and that's where you find all of these unwanted land uses. And where are you going to put it? You're certainly not putting it where rich white people live. The National Black Environmental Justice Network relaunch also follows the Trump administration's recently announced total halt to enforcement of the nation's bedrock environmental law, the National Environmental Policy Act. This will fast track the regulatory process for projects like proposed interstate highway expansions, multi-state pipelines, and anything located on federal lands or waters by removing the law's robust environmental review and public hearing requirements. In total, the administration has rolled back 100 environmental regulations in the last three and a half years. Executive Committee member Robert Bueller, a professor at Texas Southern University, often described as the father of environmental justice, said at the press briefing, the network can't just be reactive. Those of us who have been working on environmental justice for many years see these fast track and permits as a fast track to the emergency room and the cemetery for black communities. And so we will be working on not just rolling back the rollbacks, but strengthening environmental laws and protection. Executive Committee member Tina Johnson, a consultant for the Deep South Center for Environmental Justice, added at the press briefing that the coalition will put the climate crisis front and center. The National Black Environmental Justice Network seeks real climate solutions that eliminate greenhouse gas gases create millions of high-wage American jobs, build green and accessible public transportation, reduce poverty and inequality, promote equal protection of workers, frontline communities, and vulnerable populations, and provide safeguards against climate-induced health threats. Wright told The Real News the group aims to go beyond market-based solutions for the climate crisis, arguing that they potentially make a bad situation worse. Minority communities dealing with carbon pricing and and everything that was being offered uh, meant that we could probably end up with dirtier communities, even if we were able to bring down greenhouse gases. Wilkins cited all of these compounded health threats in a passionate case for the National Black Environmental Network's relaunch at the press briefing. What we need is an abolishment of a system that continually exposes us to unnecessary stress and the conditions that exemplifies the basis for a poor health outcome. It is time for change and to ensure that we have equal access to clean air, clean water, to safe playgrounds, schools that we can learn in, and all the things that as a human being we are entitled to in the country of the United States of America. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, But do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.